For this lesson, we will be looking at other methods of finding the equation of a quadratic relation in vertex form. Just as a little bit of a recap, our equation in vertex form is y equals a x minus h all squared plus k. And another important part that we need to remember is that this h is the x of the vertex with the sign switched. And this k is always going to be the y of my vertex. So let's dive into our first example. So what, we'll be, what we will be needing to look for here are two things. We'll need to start by looking for our vertex. So I'm going to find my vertex. And my vertex here is at 2, negative 4. And then I want to find another nice point. So I'm going to look through here, and I'm going to find another nice point. And I have one here at 3, negative 1. So I'm going to start by filling in what I can with my equation. So this is going to be my h. Remember to switch the sign. And then that is going to be my k. So we're going to use the idea that h and k represent the vertex and put those values into the vertex. So we always start with our general equation. And now I'm going to fill in that h and k. So all I've done is instead of writing h and k, I wrote 2 and negative 4. And now I need to find this a value. Previously, we had been finding that a value from our step pattern. So we're going to just quickly look at the step pattern just to show that we can do it the step pattern way or the new way, which we're about to learn. So again, for a step pattern, we put our pencil right onto the vertex, and we moved over one, and then we went up until we hit our graph again. So in this case, I went up three. Now, we don't always have nice A values like this, and it is always a good idea to know how to solve for A algebraically just to check your answers. So we're expecting that we should get an A value of three, but we're going to go through, we're going to do this whole thing algebraically. So looking at my equation here, I have y equals a x minus 2 all squared minus 4. Now to solve for a, I have way too many variables at the moment. So I need to fill in something for x and y. And that's where this extra point comes in. So we're just going to sub in those values for x and y. So y is negative 1. We just leave our a because that's what we're looking for. x is 3. And we just leave everything else as is. So now we're going to use bed mass to solve this. So remember, the first thing we always do are the brackets. So we'll simplify our brackets. Next, we simplify exponents. So 1 to the power of 2 is just 1. So I just have 1a, and that 4 is still just hanging out. Now to get a all by itself, that 4 needs to go to the other side. So when it goes to the other side, it changes to a positive 4. And then I have negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. So 3 equals a. And then I want to write out my full equation. So I put in that 3 for a, my h and my k. So that would be our final answer. So let's try it one more time. For this, you can see how we can do it with the graph and without the graph, but we're not always going to be given a graph. So it's really important that you're comfortable knowing how to do it both ways. So let's try this next one. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by locating our vertex. So let's put a dot right on the vertex. And my vertex is at 5, 0. 
Now, I want to find another nice point on the graph. And by nice point, I mean one that you can very easily find the coordinates of. So here's one right here. And that is at 7, 2. So let's start by filling in our H and our K. So we're filling everything in to Y equals A, X minus H, all squared, plus K. So we'll start by filling in our H and K. Now, because K is zero, we don't need to write that. I just want to make sure I put it in here for you so you can see it. But typically, and in proper form, we just would not write anything for that because we usually don't write zeros. Now, we need to solve for A. If I try to solve for A right now, I have way too many variables, so that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in our point for X and Y to help me solve for A. So for y, we're going to put a 2, and for x, we're going to put a 7. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use bed mass. So we always start with our brackets first. And I'm just not going to write that 0 because adding 0 doesn't do anything, so hopefully that isn't crazy confusing. So now we're going to do our exponents. So 2 to the power of 2 is 4, so now we have 4a. And now what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 4 to get that a all by itself. And we're left with 1 half equals a. So let's write out our full equation. y equals 1 half x, and now we need to put in our h, and then plus 0 which we're just not going to write because we don't write our zeros. So that is our final equation. And now we're going to just check out our step pattern to make sure our answer made sense. So we're expecting a step pattern of a half, one and a half, two and a half. So we're expecting over one, up a half. That looks pretty good so far. Over one, up one and a half. That looks pretty good over one, up two and a half. So it is consistent with having a step pattern of a half. Okay, let's try the next one. So for this one, we start again by identifying our vertex. So let's put a dot right on the vertex. And my vertex here is at negative one, five. So we're just going to write that out. Negative one, five. And now I need to find another nice point. So here's one right here at 0, 3. And the reason I'm picking that one is honestly just because it has a 0 in it, so it makes my math a lot easier. But you can pick whichever nice point you want as long as it is on my parabola. So now we're looking for the equation. So we're trying to fill in this general equation here. So let's start by filling in our h and our k. Remember, because of that negative in the equation, it changes the sign on our h. So in this case, we have plus 1 plus 5. Now we're looking for this a value here. So if we try to solve for it now, we have way too many variables. So we need to sub in a point for x and y. So let's sub in that point over there. So instead of a y, we're writing a 3. And instead of an x, we're going to put a 0. So now we begin our bed mass steps. So we always start with the brackets first. So now we're going to do the exponents. 1 squared is just 1, so I just have 1a. Now I need to get that a all by itself, so I'm going to move the 5 over. So my full equation, I'm going to fill in my a, 
fill in my H and fill in my K. Now we're just, because we have the graph, we're going to use it to make sure that our A value makes sense using our step pattern. So if I go from my vertex and go over one, I'm going down two. Then I go over one and I end up going down six. So a few things to note. I am going down by two, six, 10. The other thing is I have a negative A value. So it makes sense that my parabola is facing downward and is a sad parabola. So those are some signs that I did it all correctly. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to do one more example with you is we're going to do some, but you don't have the graph. So this is a perfect example as to why we're doing this. So there's two main reasons as to why we would do a question like this and why we would solve for A algebraically. If you're given a situation just like these examples where you're not given a graph, or sorry, you are not given a graph yet, you will need to do it algebraically. Secondly, sometimes we have weird A values. You could have like two thirds or seven over eight or a decimal. So it's very hard to use the step pattern for those. So solving it algebraically is always a good idea. So let's start with this example. So we have our vertex at four negative two and another point is seven one. So we're looking to fill in our equation y equals a x minus h all squared plus k. So we're going to start by filling in our h and our k. Again remembering that because of that negative in the equation it changes the sign on our H. Now I need to solve for A, but I have way too many variables going on. So I need to sub in the point for X and Y in order to have all my variables filled up. So my Y is one and my X is seven. Oops, I forgot to fill in my K before, sorry about that. We should have a little minus two over here. Okay, so now we're going to do bed mass to simplify this. So we always start with our brackets. Next, we do our exponents. Then we need to get that A all by itself. So we'll start by moving that two over. And now to get A all by itself, we're going to divide by nine, divide by nine, solve one third equals A. And one third would be very difficult to see on a graph. So solving this algebraically makes a lot of sense. And now we fill in our A, our H, and our K. And that is our final answer. Let's do one more together, and then you can try the other ones on your own. So for this example, the vertex is at 2, 0. And another point is at 0, negative 2. So we're looking to fill in y equals a, x minus h, all squared, plus k. So let's start by filling in our h and our k. So for h, we have a 2. But remember, because of that negative, the sign changes. And then for k, we have 0. So I don't need to write anything. Now, in order to solve for a, I need to fill in something for my x and my y. So for my y, I'm going to put in negative 2. And for my x, I'm going to put in 0. Now, we just use bed mass. So we're going to simplify those brackets. Then we need to do our exponents. And finally, to get a all by itself, we need to divide out that 4. So we'll have negative 1 half equals a. And then we just sub in the a we found, the h from our vertex, and then k 
is zero, so we just don't write it. And that is another example. So there's some examples below. Go through those and check your answers. And then there's some extra practice here, so you can check your answers for those as well.